Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 42 and we are talking about safe and unsafe Rust. Uh, and we're going to start off by talking about why we need unsafe Rust. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be the next few videos. Um, we're going to talk about when you should, uh, when you're going to need to use unsafe. Um, uh, we're going to talk about what undefined behavior is and help you think about it. We're going to talk about what raw pointers are, and we're going to have a look at some like actual examples of where you might use unsafe. But for this video, it's why is unsafe? Why does unsafe exist? I guess. Um, uh, so that yeah, this video why is unsafe needed? We're going to say uh, then we're going to talk about what unsafe means. Then we're going to talk about undefined behavior and some examples and types. Okay, so why is unsafe needed? Well, uh, in safe Rust, in normal Rust, the Rust that we've been talking about so far, um, if we have a reference like ampersand t or ampersand mute t, something that refers to something else, um, then it's always valid. And if you've only ever done Rust and not done any other programming in any language language with pointers, then some of this stuff um, is going to be unfamiliar. But yeah, what's um, underneath what a reference is? is a number that points at, that is the address of a piece of memory. And we've talked about, uh, in the series before about how, um, there are pointers which point at bits of memory. Um, so underneath a reference is just a number that is the address of a piece of memory. And, uh, so we've always assumed that it's always pointing at the right piece of memory. And that's because we can, because in Rust, if you have an ampersand T or an ampersand mute T, it, it is guaranteed always to point at a valid piece of memory. So it's never null, which just means that the number is zero. Um, so it's never pointing at the kind of um, non-existent zero address. Uh, also, the address is well aligned. And that means that for depending on your architecture, your computer, uh, it's at an allowed address for that type. Um, so that might be, um, it might be that it, um, it has to be divisible by four or eight or something else for that, that type to be able to live there. So that's just a kind of detail about pointers that you normally don't have to think about. Um, but if you're man manually manipulating these numbers, you do have to think about them. And crucially, uh, Rust also guarantees that it points to a bit of memory that belongs to the process and hasn't been given up by the process, like hasn't been deleted or dropped or whatever the word, the phrases that we've been using before. Um, that it, it when you first create it, it's pointing at some memory belonging to the process, the right piece of memory, the thing you meant. And then that piece of memory never gets freed up and given back to the operating system while you still have a reference to it. So that's the, those are the guarantees about references that we may not have even been thinking about, but that we have because of the way Rust works. And that's why Rust warns us when we do something wrong, like try and drop something when actually someone has still got a reference to it. So this is what, what makes Rust such fun. Um, it makes you feel safe that you can never make the kinds of mistakes that you could make um, in a language like C or C++, where you have to kind of think things through and make sure that these guarantees are true. In Rust, uh, the compiler makes sure for you, for references. Uh, and the, the way, as I said, the way it does that is using the borrow checker. Uh, and the borrow checker is just a, a part of the compiler that checks that these things are true, that um, the program really will never be pointing at bits of memory that aren't the correct piece of memory. Uh, and in particular, a, a feature of this borrow checker is that it has to be careful. Um, and it has to be absolutely sure um, that this is the case for your code um, and not be like slightly lenient because it's probably fine, right? Because then you wouldn't, you would lose all the benefits that these guarantees give you. So the borrow checker is conservative. It makes sure that it can say, when it says yes, it's definitely right. And if it's not sure, it says no, you can't do that. So, for example, here's an example of a terrible borrow checker, which is in some sense correct, which is a borrow checker that just says, no, your program is not right. And in some sense, that's an acceptable borrow checker because it never says, yes, it's all good 
for any program any program that's incorrect. It's not a very helpful one, and the real borrow checker is not like this. The real borrow checker goes out of its way and improves over time, by the way, at being able to recognize more and more correct programs and be and say false only for things that are um, actually incorrect. But it's not complete, right? It's always going to bias on the side of um, saying that your program is incorrect if it's not sure. So that means that there are some correct programs that the borrow checker is not able to convince itself are correct. Uh, and there are many useful programs that are kind of impossible for the borrow checker to check um, because the, there's stuff outside of its control. For example, um, if you're interacting with code in another language, for example, some C code, the borrow checker is not able to check your C code to make sure that it complies with all of the rules that we've just outlined. Um, and some C programs don't comply with those rules like 100% of the time um, and maybe just eventually resolve into a situation where those rules are, are obeyed again. Um, also, if you're interacting with bits of the operating system or the hardware, um, uh, the Rust compiler may not be able to guarantee that things are the way it, it thinks they are. They may have changed underneath it. Um, and further, there may be times where these rules make our code a bit slower than it could be if we temporarily break them, but then get back to a situation where they're, they're true again. So if we're doing optimization, we may actually want to break these rules temporarily in a way that we've thought through and we we are fairly sure, let's say, uh, is correct, as sure as we can be. And that's why we have this uh, situation where some of those rules uh, sometimes need to be relaxed, and that is what unsafe code is about. So um, just to conclude our discussion of why do we need unsafe code, um, Essentially, what unsafe code means is that um, the programmer is temporarily taking responsibility to check that this code is correct. And it's saying to the compiler, um, for some specific things that you check, I don't need you to check them for this bit of code because I'm taking responsibility uh, and I'm going to check things for you and check that these rules are still uh, followed. But it's really worth emphasizing at this point that that doesn't mean that the compiler kind of switches off everything it checks. It just means there's some very specific parts of what it checks um, that are temporarily turned off. And the human programmer needs to do the job of making sure that they are followed. And in particular, it means that we can use raw pointers instead of references, which have all these guarantees around them. There's this other point, other type called pointer. Um, where the conditions on what we can do with that thing are less strict um, uh, when we're inside um, unsafe code. Um, so we can do some things, and we'll figure out, we'll find out later exactly what those things are, but the most obvious one is being able to dereference a pointer, even though the compiler hasn't guaranteed for us that it's pointing at valid code. Dereference just means look, go and look up the address. So we can go and look up the address that's stored in a pointer, even though the compiler can't guarantee for us that it's correct. Now, um, your code is broken and wrong if you go and look up an address which is not right. Um, so that nothing changes there. The only difference is you as the programmer are responsible for making sure that you only go and look up an address if it's correct instead of Rust taking care of that for you like it does in most of uh, in safe Rust. All right, so that is why we need unsafe. And next time we'll start looking at what unsafe means, like how you do how you do that in code, what it really means. And we'll go on to understanding a little bit about undefined behavior and looking at some examples to help you really get your head around this stuff. So see you next time.